Welcome back to Wrestling Talk. I am Alexis Carrillo, and wow, what kind of wrestling week have we had throughout the past few days? Tons of groundbreaking announcements, and we are going to start with the very biggest piece of news that came out of this Wednesday's episode of Dynamite, and that is that current owner and founder of All Elite Wrestling, multi-billionaire Tony Khan, announced at the, I believe at the open of the show on TBS this past week, that he had purchased or had agreed on a deal to purchase Ring of Honor Wrestling. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, AEW is now the owner of Ring of Honor. And that just pretty much confirms a lot of speculation going around the IWC the past few weeks, the past few months, pretty much the past few years, ever since uh, AEW was founded and ever since, uh, what was it, All Out came or was produced by Ring of Honor. And then that didn't uh, cement itself into Ring of Honor's legacy, but rather it started the creation of AEW. That's something that everyone out there started to theorize and it finally came true and the sad part about this the sad part about this and i'm just going to touch upon this because it's something inevitable the sad part about this happening was that it had to happen after a worldwide pandemic after ring of honor wrestling was unable to produce shows anymore with fans in attendance that really hurt their business and ultimately it led to the current uh or to the former version that we all knew and love of Ring of Honor Wrestling to end its course, to run its course. Now, it has gone the way of WCW and ECW because they have been bought by a bigger wrestling corporation. And the question that every single wrestling fan out there is asking themselves is, will Ring of Honor Wrestling cease to exist? Will Ring of Honor Wrestling continue but be a... a, a a, a watered-down version, kind of like in the same vein that WWE brought ECW back in 2006. Or will Tony Khan try to maintain Ring of Honor in the way that it was, and give it its own identity and let it be its own brand, just, you know, it won't be any type of competition to anyone at this point because we now know that they are now a subsidiary and pretty much a lot of wrestling fans don't like this word, but it's pretty much now it's going to be developmental for all elite wrestling. All in all, this is pretty much a positive for every for everyone but Ring of Honor for the most part. Because yes, Ring of Honor gets to continue its legacy and continue and, and gets to keep the brand alive or that's what it seems that Tony Khan is planning to do with the brand. Because he did say that he was looking to secure a deal, a streaming deal, where fans could just access Ring of Honor's thousands of hours historic uh, tape library on demand. So he's working on that. Hopefully, it comes in conjunction with, you know, with AEW, and they're able to put both of those uh, products on a streaming service. And rumors... Since last December, since it was announced that Ring of Honor Wrestling was going on hiatus, was that Ring of Honor Wrestling was not going to be the exact same product, the exact same company that it was before it took the hiatus. And a lot of wrestling uh, superstars out there that were contracted by Ring of Honor Wrestling before the hiatus have confirmed that they are no longer contracted in any way or form to ROH. They have no alignment with Tony Khan at this point. At this point, we have the upcoming Supercard of Honor during WrestleMania weekend coming up, where a few of the wrestlers, namely the, the Briscoes, current Ring of Honor World Champion uh, Jonathan Gresham and f and former Ring of Honor World Champion, still has the original current uh, design of the World Title Belt Bandito. They're going on one on one in that unification match to decide the one true and only undisputed Ring of Honor World Champion. So that's confirmed, but either way, they are not currently contractually linked to Ring of Honor Wrestling. Now, the positives that I see here is that AEW has so much talent, and they're planning on bringing in, on bringing in so much talent into the company 
that they don't have any use for them. When's the last time you saw Brian Cage? When's the last time you saw Jay Lethal? When's the last time they used Ricky Starks to his full potential? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. And yes, you have shows like Dark and Dark Elevation, where you put these guys uh, on a third and fourth tier show under the AEW banner, and it doesn't really, it doesn't really make any difference. Yes, you're giving them work. Yes, you're giving them reps and matches, but ultimately, if you're a professional wrestling fan, namely a mainstream wrestling fan, what matters to you is what you see on Dynamite. What matters to you is what you see on Rampage. What matters to you is what you see on AEW pay-per-views. What you're going to see at Revolution this upcoming weekend for AEW. That's what matters. If you're working dark, if you're working dark elevation, that's fine. You're working your craft. You're getting paid. And ultimately, you're given, you're, you're given a chance for the higher-ups, the backstage agents, the Tony Khan, and all the EVPs left in AEW to look at you and think of something to do with you in the future. Now, with Ring of Honor, they have their own uh, broadcasting distribution deal still in place. They still have TV tapings and they still have Supercard of Honor coming up. They still have plenty of hours to book. You can send a Brian Cage, and a Ricky Starks, and a Jay Lethal down to Ring of Honor Wrestling and, and, and have them lead the brand forward and have them take Ring of Honor and put that brand and put that show on their backs in the meantime while they get their footing back in AEW. So I see that as, as a positive for all elite wrestling. And Ring of Honor fans, as far as, you know, as I can tell, you're going to have to stick it out. Yes, the ROH brand is going gonna, is gonna to continue, and it's going to continue the, under the AEW banner. And that's something that a lot of you might have wanted at this point because we haven't had any uh, Ring of Honor content as of late. But it will never be the same again. Ring of Honor will never be the same again. That era... The era of honor was truly ended, and now Ring of Honor is basically NXT. Ring of Honor is basically OVW. Ring of Honor, like I said, is basically the modern version of ECW and WCW, and that's just something that's we're gonna have to have, we're, that we are all gonna have to accept. And well, you know there are rumors out there that. Cody Rhodes talks with uh, WWE have fizzled out. Does that mean that, that Cody Rhodes doesn't go back on his word technically? Because yes, he left AEW, but now he could go to Ring of Honor and, and, and go back to what he used to do for that brand? That's a possibility. Anything can happen in professional wrestling. All I know is the Ring of Honor brand will continue to live, will continue to be alive, we'll, we'll still be able to see it, just... Tony Khan took it under his corporation, under his management, and we'll see what happens. So, all in all, what do you think is going to happen with Ring of Honor? Do you like the idea of Tony Khan buying Ring of Honor Wrestling? Do you think that was the best foot forward for him and the professional wrestling industry? Do you think it, it would behoove him to just make Ring of Honor pretty much an indie wrestling company and just promote their tape library on a future streaming deal along with AEW content? Leave your thoughts, comments, and predictions on the comment section below. But in the meantime, like I said, this upcoming weekend, we've got yet another AEW pay-per-view. We've got Revolution. We've got a hell of a card to look forward to. And one of the matches I want to, I want to talk about right now is the AEW Women's World Championship match where Britt Baker, DMD, the champion, is gonna is, is set to defend against her longtime rival, a badass in her own right, and someone who has always had the fans behind her ever since she made her debut in AEW like a year, year and a half ago. 
I'm talking about Thunder Rosa. They're going to go at it one-on-one -on -one for the AEW Women's World Championship. And if you recall, their most recent battle, I believe, was last year's at St. Patrick's Day Bash. I think that's what they called their St. Patrick's Day show for AEW Dynamite. They made headlines. It had been a long time. I don't know if we had ever seen at this point two women go at it and then both women end up with crimson masks for faces. That's how damn good that match was. That's the headlines that they caused around the wrestling world. As a matter of fact, that match alone is the reason that Britt Baker got the fans behind her back and DMD went on to become Women's World Champion in All Elite Wrestling. So to say that I'm excited for this match would be an understatement. Now, with that said, do I think Britt Baker should retain the Women's World title at Revolution? And the answer is no, she should not retain. And it's as simple as this. The women's division in AEW currently, like it has been in the past, like, like it was before Britt Baker's monumental rise to the top in AEW, it currently needs a jump start. Unfortunately, the way Tony Khan and his creative team have booked the show, you know, it's pretty much safe to say that Britt Baker has cooled off as world champion. Not only that, Britt Baker has cooled off as a segment, as a as an entertainer for all elite wrestling. She doesn't get the same reactions she used to at at the height of her reign. That's an that's pretty much a given. So you need something to really inject some adrenaline into the division. You need some excitement. And if you go any other route, if you go any other way, than to have Thunder Rosa not become Women's World Champion at Revolution, then you're just gonna undermine the entire women's division. You're gonna undermine every single segment going forward for the women's division. And that's not something that you want to do because, like I said, before Britt Baker, the women's division was on very short legs. It was very much just wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. There was nothing entertaining about it. They put on some very good matches, but other than that, they didn't give us much to talk about. Britt Baker changed that. Now it's time for Thunder Rosa to change that, give us this legendary rivalry, and hopefully down the line, we get Jade Cargill versus Thunder Rosa in a title versus title, champion versus champion match down the line, because they've been building that up for a while now. And then eventually, eventually down the line, you build up Britt Baker, or you build up a Ty Conti, or an Anna Jay, or a Jamie Hayter, or someone to take down Jade Cargo, who ultimately is going to be the next big thing in the AEW Women's Division. But the fact of the matter is, you cannot do that if you don't have Britt Baker lose the title at Revolution. Ultimately, that should be the way to go. Because that's what wrestling is all about. You, you, you gotta tell stories. You gotta have the bad guys win. You gotta have the good guys win. You have to tell a story that benefits the characters and benefits the entertainment value. And having Britt Baker go out there, do the shtick she's been doing for, what, three, four, five months now, where she goes out there, puts on a good match, retains thanks to, thanks to some help from Rebel or, 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 or her other protégés then that's just going to make the fans not want to watch anything reg uh, regarding her statements or regarding her, her, her segments, rather, on AEW TV. So for me, my call would be Thunder Rosa becomes AEW Women's World Champion this weekend at Revolution. No doubt in my mind, if they go any other way, it's going to be a big mistake and they are going to regret it. So with that said, what do you think? What do you think? Do you think... It's time to take the title off of Britt Baker. Do you agree with me on that? Or do you think, you know, uh, we can build to an eventual babyface turn for Britt Baker 
to go up against Jade, Jade Cargill down the, down the line. That might happen. Leave your thoughts, comments, and predictions on a comment section below. Not only do we have that one World Championship match at Revolution, we also have a match that everyone at this point is looking forward to. We have a match that, you know, I'm not really fond of the stipulation that they have chosen for this match, which is the dog collar match uh, between CM Punk and MJF, but I am so damn proud of how AEW has managed to maintain this feud, this rivalry interesting. They've given us twists and turns, and to cap it all off, this past week on Dynamite, they gave us just something to look forward to, because MJF, after everything that he did, after giving that heartfelt story, which was so out of character, that everyone, everyone in the IWC thought that MJF was just playing the crowd. They were just playing everyone on the internet about this story about how he was bullied as a kid. And it, that's made him the person that he is today. And, 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 and I'm not going to lie, MJF, he made us feel for him, for him. And we still feel for him as a human being, as a person, because if he went through that throughout his life, that's other than his character, you should definitely, definitely uh, you know, empathize with MJF and the fact that he used that in the feud and, and the fact that AEW was smart enough to utilize to get CM Punk to get his guard down in storyline manner and now at Dynamite have just MJF just gut CM Punk. I mean, if you ask anybody who watched that segment, you damn well know you want to watch that match. You damn well know you want to watch CM Punk kick the shit out of MJF. And it doesn't matter how bad. It doesn't matter about that story that he told. You want him to bleed. You want him to beg for mercy. And that's basically what you want from this type of feud. There's no championship on the line. This isn't for the number one contendership for any title. This is about pride. This is about what's been going on between them. For the past few months, MJF has been dodging CM Punk time and time and time again. And when they finally get in the ring, MJF gets one over Punk thanks to some outside interference, thanks to, thanks to some cheating. And CM Punk, being that he is being booked as a babyface currently, well, he has no choice but to stick to his code, follow the rules, and just take it. Well, this weekend, upcoming weekend, at Revolution, he will take it, but he will also dish it out. And like I said a few weeks ago, MJF should still win this match outright. Ultimately, it's better for AEW's business if MJF comes out on top, especially considering that I don't see Adam Cole becoming AEW World Champion anytime soon, even if... He did uh, cause headlines with uh, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly and putting the champion down on Dynamite. He got the upper hand there. He won't get at Revolution. Hangman Page is going to need a challenger for double or nothing in May. And ladies and gentlemen, once this feud, once this rivalry is all said and done, once the dust has settled, MJF is that number one contender. Because almost two years ago, I said MJF should have beaten John Moxley to become AEW World Champion at All In. And that didn't happen. That didn't happen. Tony Khan and everybody else in AEW didn't think he was ready. Well, Tony, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, it's time to pull a trigger on Maxwell Jacob Friedman, Friedman, sorry, excuse me, as AEW World Champion. And the time to do that is now. It's March 4th. You have two months to get MJF to the point where he beats CM Punk 
He gloats about it. He talks about he how he is the biggest star in AEW now, then, forever. You might even want to use that WWE trope in one of his programs. And then you give your champion, your fighting champion, cowboy shit, hangman Adam Page, no choice but to confront MJF. And they go at it one-on-one -on -one for the world title in Las Vegas, Nevada. And then you finally give us that MJF run we want. And guess what? Guess what? If you do that, MJF is going to be a, one of the biggest heel champions you've ever had in recent history, not only in AEW, but in professional wrestling over the past, what, 10, 15, 20 years? There's no doubt in my mind about that. And then you have your pick of the litter of who you want which baby face you want to build up to dethrone MJF eventually? John Moxley. He needs a comeback story. Brian Danielson, turn him back into a baby face. CM Punk down the line. Although I already said it, I don't want CM Punk to ever beat MJF, and I stand by that. I don't care what is gonna go down. I don't care. A returning Kenny Omega versus MJF. You want a you want a, a super heel in MJF? You want a super babyface in returning Kenny Omega? Give us that down the line. But it all comes up to MJF, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, becoming world champion. So with that said, you know you already know my thoughts. The big matches at Revolution, you already know them. Hangman Page retains. MJF beats CM Punk. That leads us to the main event of Double or Nothing, where MJF beats Adam Page to become AEW World Champion. Now, if you have a different thoughts, if you have different comments, if you have different spoilers or predictions or any different booking plans you want to go ahead and throw my way on the comment section below, you are free to do so, my friend. But like I said, I think ultimately for AEW's business currently, that's going to be the best foot forward and going back to the first segment of today's show we got to talk about the fact that Ring of Honor has now been purchased by AEW and I'm not going to go down that road again right now but you can't deny the fact that Impact Wrestling has been keeping the Ring of Honor wrestling name, quote unquote, alive or in the limelight since they went on hiatus. Since Hard to Kill, Honor No More, they've been a major part of Impact Wrestling storylines. To the point that at WrestleCon during WrestleMania weekend this upcoming April, Impact Wrestling has already announced the Multiverse of, ma of Matches, which is a play on the upcoming MCU movie Doctor Strange and the Multiverse, Multiverse of Madness also coming out I believe in April or May no actually May but that's entirely aside but basically the concept of that of, of that event is and I'm just assuming here because there's only been a few matches announced amongst them the current Impact Tag Team Champions the Good Brothers against historic tag team Ring of Honor tag team Briscoes one on one or two on two rather in that event during WrestleCon. But I assume that there are gonna be a lot more impact stars versus former Ring of Honor stars or former stars that were uh, synonymous with Ring of Honor wrestling before their hiatus. So they're building up to that to WrestleCon, but unfortunately even though the Forbidden Door is open, even though even though Tony Khan has had a, a, a good relationship with Impact Wrestling, to say the least. They've had a working agreement. They've sent each other stars. They've worked with each other on programs. Now, it gets kind of complicated. Because like I said, Tony Khan is trying to keep the Ring of Honor brand alive. And now he has to have his own interests ahead of Ring of Honor's. And... I don't know if that's going to include the fact that Impact can still use the Ring of Honor banner or the Ring of Honor name or could still allude to ROH in any way or form. 
Uh, Honor No More. You know, that's the name of a stable. That's something that you can use. You, I mean, I, 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 I think that's, that would be fair use in every single way possible, business-wise. We go back to the attitude. You have Team Extreme and Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy and Lita. And that didn't uh, cause any trademark infringement with ECW at the time, so I don't see why this should in any way or form. But it's time for Scott DeMore to, you know, work an agreement with Tony Khan once again, see if they can manufacture a way to, you know, bookend this storyline the best way possible. Now, as far as I see it, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as I know, all these stars involved, Mike Bennett, uh, Matt Taven, Maria Canales, PCO, Vincent, uh, uh, Kenny King, uh, all these former Ring of Honor stars that are, that are now a part of Impact Wrestling programming, as far as I can tell, they are Impact Wrestling employees. They are currently signed to Impact Wrestling. They are just, in storyline, defending their ROH banner. So, they're safe on that, I assume. But, like I've said in the past, and I will continue to do so, Impact on Access TV, that distribution deal itself, the fact that they don't have the audience, the, the audience reach to make any kind of big impact on the pro wrestling industry, ultimately hurts the Impact product, and it ultimately handcuffs Scott Demore, in this case. So, you know, down the line, they'll have no choice but to uh, make it seem as in that they have no other choice but to make it seem that, uh, you know, uh, Impact Wrestling and Ring of Honor can no longer be aligned with themselves. And that's unfortunate. Like I said, stuff happens, business happens, and it's out of anyone's control. And we can shut, and all we can do as a wrestling fan is just enjoy the product. Enjoy what, what Impact Wrestling is about to deliver this upcoming weekend with Sacrifice. Yet another Impact Plus special that we should look forward to. But they're gonna, what they're about to de deliver to us at uh, WrestleCon this weekend and hopefully, you know, this storyline doesn't just go away and they're able to work out a deal to the point that it ends the right way. And it gives us wrestling fans, Impact wrestling fans, some closure. So with that said, what do you think is going to happen between Impact and Ring of Honor? Do you think they're going to work out, work out a deal with AEW to really, I don't know, bookend this, 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 this storyline? Or do you think that... They might go the route of, oh, you now own the rights to this storyline for the most part, so it's yours. I'm out. With that said, leave your thoughts, comments, and predictions on the comments section below. And I just want to end today's show with the interview that Vince McMahon, a very rare interview that he hadn't done in about what? All over 15 years now, one-on-one -on -one sit-down interview with current SmackDown commentator, color commentator, Pat McAfee, where they talked about a variety of things, where Pat McAfee did a fantastic job, a stupendous job of humanizing and allowing Vince McMahon to open up and actually have a conversation and not be Mr. McMahon. That's very rare to see, and it's very rare for someone to bring that out of the 73-year-old billionaire, but he did that. And amongst many other things, you know, Vincent McMahon called Michael Cole a horrible human being, which caused a lot of laugh around uh, the wrestling, the IWC. Uh, he also offered Pat McAfee a match at WrestleMania, which caused some controversy out there because, you know, WrestleMania right now, the card, it's shaping up better and better as we as we head into the show of shows. But it, you know, it could be better. Uh, he talked about his competition. He talked about AEW for, or Pat McAfee for, uh, brought up AEW and 
Vince McMahon just basically said that, you know, they're there. He recognizes them. And, you know, when they get to the point where they have to compete, Vince McMahon will not back down. That's basically what he said. He also brought up the fact uh, that, yeah, he does listen to the wrestling fans. Vince McMahon does indeed listen to the wrestling fans. Not the IWC, because as I've stated here in the past, and as it's, and as it's well known up until this point, the IWC is very fickle. They change on a dime like that. They go up, down, sideways, right, left, backwards, frontwards. It doesn't matter. As long as, you know, they have frustrations in life, they're gonna criticize the product based on those frustrations. That's something that everybody knows. And Vincent Mann basically went out and said, I don't listen to the IWC because of that. I listen to the wrestling audience. I listen to what they want because it's good for business. You have to at this point. But the IWC has a certain way of viewing things and a certain way of handling things that he doesn't like. And that's why he doesn't really pay attention to that or really listen to that. But what I want to touch upon is Vince McMahon is inducting. He is officially going to be inducting The Undertaker into the WWE Hall of Fame during WrestleMania weekend. An honor that has only been bestowed upon one other man, I believe, in the past. And that was Stone Cold Steve Austin. So if Vince McMahon inducts you, you got Stone Cold, you got The Undertaker, and, you know, this is a prediction, this is a spoiler, whatever you want to call it. In the future, I believe Vince McMahon is going to induct two other men, possibly John Cena and The Rock, into the WWE Hall of Fame. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure about that. But you couldn't have it any other way. I mean, I wanted Kane to induct him. I said that last week. Their relationship, their storyline on TV, behind the scenes, legendary. The biggest, most fantastical storyline out there. But Vince McMahon inducting Mark Calloway, The Undertaker, into the WWE Hall of Fame. There's something poetic about that. And like I said, we haven't seen anybody else been announced for the wrestling, uh, for the WWE Hall of Fame this year. Like I said, there shouldn't be anybody else. It should be all these stars that are that are, that are synonymous with the Undertaker's legendary feuds: Kane, Triple H, Vince McMahon, the Undertaker, Stone, um, excuse me, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, uh, Mick Foley, uh, Randy Orton. Edge and, and, and many, many more out there. Just have them throughout the entire one hour, two hour ceremony. Just go out there, tell some stories about the dead man, and really make the show about the Undertaker. And Vince McMahon inducting him into the WWE Hall of Fame just adds fuel to that fire that every single pro professional wrestling fan out there wants. Because even if you aren't a wrestling fan, even if you aren't a WWE fan now, but you were in the past. You respect The Undertaker, and more often than not, you are going to watch his Hall of Fame induction. So with that said, like I said, you know, Vince McMahon inducting The Undertaker into the WWE Hall of Fame. Good on that. And that's been it for today's shows of, of Wrestling Talk. I've been Alexis Carrillo. Enjoy Rampage tonight. Enjoy SmackDown. Yet another stop on the road to WrestleMania. And enjoy this weekend's shows of Sacrifice and Revolution. Hell of a wrestling weekend to look forward to tonight. I've been Alexis Carrillo. See you next time.